The origin of this unusual, and I dare say great, recipe was a mishap in a hotel restaurant where I was the saucier many years ago. There was going to be a large banquet the following day, and the head chef had accidentally left a note for the kitchen to make 90 French confit legs, duck legs, when in fact we were supposed to be making Chinese duck in mushu pancakes. The next day when he returned and realized his mistake, he picked on me to fix it. In shock, I asked him how he expected me to transform confit duck into Peking duck, and he shouted back, here the saucier, make a sauce. What I came up with was actually better than what we had been serving as Chinese duck, plus it was easier and less expensive. Here it is. One hundred and ninety grams of mandarin orange segments and uh, uh, three strips of the, the zest that uh, don't have any pith on them. Also into this, eighty grams of Granny Smith green apple cut into large cubes, forty grams of carrots, forty grams of onion, and forty grams of ginger cut into also into large pieces. And half a teaspoon of coriander seeds, half a teaspoon of Sichuan peppercorns, also a tablespoon of rice vinegar, 60 milliliters of soy sauce, 60 grams of dark brown sugar, uh, 350 milliliters of chicken stock or duck stock. Ideally duck stock, but you probably won't have that on hand. And then we're going to begin cooking this at a, at a very slow simmer. It's been about two hours now, and you can tell when it's done because these Granny Smith apples are soft as mush. That means it's ready. Pass this sort of sieve, press down on it to get as much of the material as you can out. And then the liquid that's in here is going to go back on the stove to reduce some more. Now we're going to turn up the heat just a little bit more. Still, we don't want to have a rolling boil or anything. We want it a little bit hotter. It doesn't take all day. Okay. Got this at a simmer. It's actually it's a little bit too hot now. I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to add uh, some dried red chilies to this and a star anise. I'm going to reduce it down a little bit more and then strain it one more time. Show you this is the uh, temperature. It's about 80 degrees Celsius. That's the amount of reduction you want. And after about <coughs> 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to strain this off into a bowl. and transfer it to a jar. <clears throat> this is what it comes down to. Get about 200 grams. I weighed it. About 200 grams. Okay, I'm going to combine 30 grams of rice flour. 30 grams of regular all-purpose flour, 150 mils of milk in it. Blitz it. Okay. Now we're going to let it 
stand for at least 15 minutes before we use it. 15 to 30 minutes. The next step is to uh, cook the, the uh, confit duck leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this <coughs> elixir that I made and I'm going to brush just a little bit of this on it. It won't stick well, it'll mostly run off, but that's okay. It'll, it'll help flavor the duck nevertheless. And now this is going to go under the broiler uh, about six inches away from the broiler on mine. At home, it's about uh, eight minutes, six to eight minutes. Uh, in a restaurant, it actually cooks in about two minutes. <clears throat> so it'll depend on the strength of your broiler and how far it is. Don't put the duck too close to the heat source, otherwise what you'll end up with is you'll end up with the spots that are the tallest will be black and burnt before the rest of it's cooked. So give it some space and give it a little bit. When the duck leg comes out of the broiler, this is, this is what you want to see. It's nicely, evenly cooked. It's not all that crispy yet, but we're going to take care of that. The skin has, has been um, rendered some of the fat off of it been completely warmed up again after being in the refrigerator. Uh, the reason we got this black spot is because I actually positioned this a little bit too close to the heat unit in the oven. Yeah, it's just a matter of <clears throat> taking this duck apart. If it looks red, don't let that worry you. It's it's completely cooked. We saw to that during the confiting process. Okay. And of course you need to make sure that you don't get any bones in this. Now, after you cut it up like this, you'll find there's some sections. There's some nice crisp skin, like this, nice and crisp already. And then you've got some kind of fatty blobs here. These have to be rendered separately. That's the first step that they're going to go into the pan before the rest of this meat does. And we're going to render these down some more. Just to clarify, this is what you should have at this point. You've got uh, the duck meat. You've got a piece of crispy skin that came off of the broiler and you've got the rest of this cooking in the pan that's the fatty um, little pocket of fat in the corner of the, the duck quarter. It's just part of dealing with the, with the duck's natural anatomy. You're going to have little pockets of fat. This is, this is too fatty and greasy and oily. So we're, we're, we have the fatty bits here continuing to render down and to get them crispy which is going to take a while because as you can see there's, there's quite a lot of fat in this section. When you start getting a lot of fat in the pan, you need to uh, tip it up, drain it out. It'll have a hard time crisping if there's too much fat. And you just add that fat to your rendered duck fat for the next time you make confit. Yeah, we'll keep it going here. It, it needs more. It's not crisp yet. And after you've drained the fat two or three times, and you're getting something here that's starting to feel... It's, it's a little bit spongy still, but it's starting to get crisp. Now I'm going to take piece of duck skin uh, with the inside down. This is the part that came off of the duck after we browned it into the boiler. That's going to go down into the pan to crisp up the other side. We want this very crispy. And you keep this process up. You keep draining it and frying it. 
some more, drain it, keep getting that oil off of there. You want to keep it going until you've got something that's about as crisp as you can get. Then we're going to put this back with the rest of the meat. Now here it is with the rest of the meat. Get a run. I knife through this a couple times. It's very, very nice and crisp. This will give it good texture. We do, again, we don't want to we don't want to turn it into a paste. Just give it uh, a few passes with a knife. Make sure that it's going to be tender when it's back into the same pan. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of that mixture and all the duck meat and the crispy skin just back in. This is not to cook it. You will make it tough if you cook it too long in this. We're just warming everything through and getting that flavor in there. That's all we're doing. As soon as it's warmed through and the flavor is through, get it out of the pan. And now we have the final meat that's ready uh, to be used inside the pancake. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.